All right, so, um, okay. So let's finish what we were doing. So you remember we, we were talking about um, spectrum spheres. And uh, spherical harmonics. So this is a continuation uh, of uh, what we had from last time. Okay, so um, you remember um, we defined this space PK, which was PK of Rn, Rn plus one, so this was a space of uh, homogeneous polynomials of degree k in n plus one variables. So this was a space of homogeneous always degree k in n plus one variables so this is uh, of course nothing but the k symmetric power of the vector space r n plus one star so you get you take because we're talking about functions so i go to the dual of r n plus one you take its uh, k symmetric power if you want we can think about it like that, but this is very clear. PK is homogeneous polynomials of the K. And we defined also um, HK to be kernel of Laplacian uh, from PK, which takes us to PK minus two, of course. Uh, so this was uh, harmonic polynomials of the VK. Space of harmonic solutions of delta equal to zero or more space of harmonic polynomials. I mean, homogeneous polynomials. of degree k. Okay, and what we noticed uh, it was that if you take one of these harmonic polynomials of degree k for any f belonging to hk, uh, fk tilde, which is by definition a uh, restriction of fk to this uh, n plus one sphere, I mean, sorry, n sphere, we notice that this is actually uh, not a harmonic function on, on the sphere, but uh, is an eigenfunction of the Laplacian. Uh, so, so is an eigenfunction eigenfunction of uh, delta restricted to Sn or delta Sn. Uh, so in fact, we found the eigenvalue as well. So this satisfies this equation, delta F equal to lambda K F. The lambda K was, um, I believe it turned out to be what? K times K plus N minus one, this was. So this was for k equal to zero, one, two, and so on. And then we said that, okay, we have found some harmonic functions. Sorry, we have found some eigenvalues, some points in the spectrum, and some eigenfunctions. But the question is if we have found everything or not. Are there any other points in the spectrum of the Laplacian? 
And for each uh, thing in the spectrum, is it, are there other things in HK, uh, other than HK, that might be also uh, uh, in the eigenspace of that eigenvalue lambda K? And then, uh, as I said, this is a lucky situation. With the first uh, hit, you hit the target. You got the eigenvalues, and you got all the eigenvectors for each eigenvalue. So this is very rare, but uh, that's what we are going to show in this case. So this HK, I mean, HK tilde, which is this space of all of tilde's restrictions F is in HK. This space is called the uh, spherical harmonics corresponding to this uh, eigenvalue. So this is uh, K again from zero up to infinity. These are called uh, spherical harmonics. So spherical harmonics, of course, as you see, it doesn't mean they are solutions of Laplace and f equal to zero. They are solutions of Laplace and f equal to lambda f for some particular lambda. And so there are these levels, k equal to zero, k equal to one, k equal to two, and k equal to Okay, so what we want to show now is that uh, uh, that's it. So let us define an inner product on HK uh, on HK. I mean, on actually PK, even uh, not necessarily HK, yeah, on, on PK. So the inner product of two functions, uh, we can just define. Uh, P and Q by definition is just uh, P tilde Q tilde over SN. So we have these polynomials which are, of course, not integrable over Rn, Rn plus one. They are not integrable, they are polynomials. But if you restrict to SN, this is a compact space and we can integrate them. So that's. Uh, so this is a positive definite inner product. And here you'll notice that we are working with real valued functions. So I don't have to put conjugate here. So you can work with complex valued functions if you want, but here we are working with real valued functions. So just, just to be consistent. Uh, okay, so, and then, uh, so we get a pre-Hilbert space structure. Uh, dx sum pk's k equal to zero up to infinity. So this is uh, just all polynomials uh, on in n plus one variable as a result, because every polynomial you can write as sum of homogeneous components. And so if you do this, this is really just uh, r of x1, x1 plus one. So that's all. Algebraic object. So the theorem that we want to prove, which is uh, what I said here, is, is the following. Uh, we want to we want to show that uh, these guys, the harmonic uh, spherical harmonics, uh, form a complete uh, uh, orthonormal basis for the two of S N. So let me just write it. So a question. Uh, yes, yes, yes. When you say that this direct sum of PK spaces forms a pre-Hilbert space, yes. do you mean that actually the scalar product is non-degenerate or? Yes, the, the scalar product is really non-degenerate, right? Yeah, that's true. And that's uh, because if you have polynomials uh, restricted to SN, you know the value of polynomials, uh, especially in this case, they are homogeneous. Uh, then, uh, yeah, I mean, th that's going to be zero because it is not de non degenerate here on, on this end. And so one of them must be zero. So then that's uh, going to be zero everywhere. So that's definitely non degenerate. Yeah. 
Uh, and we take, of course, this is an orthogonal direct sum by, by definition. We take it to be orthogonal. So different homogeneous components, we take them to be ortog orthogonal to each other. So maybe that was your question, right? Or maybe not. No, I was basically asking whether it is not that. It is not degenerate, right? I mean, each PK, yeah. I mean, on each PK, it's definitely not degenerate, and different components are orthogonal to each other. Yeah. Okay, so that's not uh, difficult to see. So the theorem that we want to prove is the, is the following result now. Okay. So theorem. Uh, L2 of Sn plus 1 is equal to the sum of um, not Hk tilde's a from 0 up to infinity. I mean, this is the Hilbert theorem. You see, left hand side is a Hilbert space. Right hand side, this is a Hilbert Dirac sum. So it means that you have to complete it anyhow. So, but usually it's not usual to write this sign. We just say this is a Hilbert uh, space Dirac sum, means that you have to complete it. But yeah, anyhow. So what does this mean? It means that we have got the uh, spectral decomposition of Laplacian now for L2 of Sn. So I, beginning in day one, I mentioned that there is this general theorem from functional analysis, which is a spectral decomposition of Laplacian on compact operators. And in this case, we have explicitly this information. So this is this uh, spectral decomposition. of Laplacian of round scale. Right, so that's the, um, okay, so if you prove this, uh, then you're done because, uh, yeah, I mean, it just means that there are no other uh, eigenvalues, no other points in the spectrum because anything else would be orthogonal to all of them and that contradicts completeness of this decomposition. And there's uh, each HK, there's not going to be any extra eigenvector corresponding to each eigenvalue either because that would also contradict completeness. So this, this does, uh, uh, if you prove this result, that's everything you want to know. So now this result follows from a lemma so uh, theorem, okay, so this is, I'll improve it uh, in a second, but let us first prove a lemma. Okay, uh, note, uh, both theorem, I mean, theorem follows from the lemma. So here is this lemma. So lemma is that for any k, yeah, this is bigger than equal to zero, we have an orthogonal uh, decomposition uh, p to k. is equal to P2K are these homogeneous polynomials of degree 2K in N plus one variables, right? So P2K is equal to H2K. There is this harmonic uh, polynomial components. Direct sum R2, H2K minus two. Direct sum R4 and finally R2N or to k, sorry, is zero. 
and P to K plus one, similarly for odd ones also, is equal to H two K plus one. Direct sum R two H two K minus two. Direct sum uh, R two K H one. And that is one. H1 is simply harmonic polynomials of degree one. So it is just span of coordinate functions, x1, x2, xn plus one. Any linear combination because functions of degree one are automatically in the kernel of Laplace and if you differentiate twice, you're gonna get set, uh, zero for, of linear functions. So dimension of H1, we know already is N plus one, but uh, it gets more complicated as you move uh, up the ladder, but uh, this is the decomposition that, and what is R? R of course is this polynomial, right? R2 is the polynomial X, X1 squared plus Xn plus one squared, right? Uh, so we are not taking uh, square roots or anything. So, this result is purely algebraic, actually. You can prove it by hand and by algebra, but I will give a different proof, a little more analytic, but you can prove this by hand. I mean, so, so let me just give an, as an exercise, uh, it, it's a nice algebra proof. Uh, I'm pretty sure you don't need anything but basic linear algebra to prove it. So let me, but just, just, let me just give it as an exercise. Prove the lemma. Um, okay, so I will give a different proof soon, but with lemma is. Anyhow, so, so the, the point is that the lemma implies the theorem. So that's what we have to see. Does this lemma mean that uh, all polynomials regarded as a ring form a, a free, like a polynomial ring over the harmonic polynomial ring, something like that? Uh, polynomial rings over the harmonic polynomial rings. I mean, uh, this uh, lemma, Yeah, you, yeah, you, you mean uh, like uh, like a free module over this this? Yeah, I don't know how to say it though. I mean, oh, harmonic polynomials don't form a ring though. So what I said doesn't make sense. Sorry. Harmonic polynomials do, don't form a ring. Uh, no, the product of two harmonic functions is not harmonic. I mean, you know that, right? Yes. If you have two harmonic functions, uh, I mean, delta Laplacian of F equal to Laplacian of G equal to zero, it does not follow that Laplacian of FG equal to zero. Because Laplacian of FG, there is, I mean, <laughs> so if, even for uh, first degree things like X and X, if you take X squared, Laplacian of X squared on the line is not zero. But X is linear, is in the kernel of Laplacian. So if the two factors the same, so already you have a counter example. So no, um, this, uh, yeah, harmonic functions don't form any. But there is something maybe in this decomposition you wanna, you wanna formulate it as, as, as some link structure. I don't know, but that's what uh, is saying. Any other questions or? All right. So now, uh, where are we? So now that why lemma implies the theorem. That's what I claim here, right? Theorem follows from this lemma. So why, why we have uh, such a thing? Um, ah, so, um, in fact, we have to use uh, some, some tools of analysis now. 
So by stone Weierstrass theorem, stone Weierstrass. Approximation theorem. Uh, we know that uh, direct sums of these polynomials. So we are just uh, restricting polynomials to a sphere. We are not doing it. This is, this is dense. In uh, uniform uh, topology. Uniform norm in uh, C of S n plus one. In fact, these guys now, by the way, form an algebra, so that's important. In Stone Weierstrass theorem, the result was that if you have a an algebra of functions that separates points, separates points of the space for any compact host of the space, you have a subalgebra of continuous functions that separates points and contains one, I believe, then uh, that guy, that sub, that subalgebra is dense in, in uniform topology, uniform norm on the space of continuous functions, right? So this is a general form of Weierstrass approximation here, which is due to stone. So it's called stone Weierstrass approximation. Okay, so in particular, this is also dense in L2 norm. Because this is uh, yeah, harder to achieve uh, density uniform. Hence, dense in L2 norm. Um, also, uh, so, but, but now by, by the lemma, um, so let me erase here. Okay, by lemma, uh, we know that um, PK uh, is a sum of HL for any K, PKL is a sum of H L T loss for uh, less than or equal to K. You see, if you restrict these functions, these components to uh, sphere, these factors disappear because X one squared, X n plus one squared is equal to one on the sphere. So you're really writing a function as sums of restrictions of harmonic polynomials. That's the result of this lemma. So it follows that direct sums of this harmonic, uh, so, sorry, direct sums of spherical harmonics is equal to direct sums of restrictions of all functions. So that's uh, remarkable, right? Because over the big space, Rn plus one, uh, this is only a small part of that. But over, uh, if you stick to a sphere, round the sphere, they are the same. So why the Schwarz approximation said this is dense. So this guy is dense. This guy is dense. So it follows that the uh, lemma uh, implies that uh, Okay, hence left hand side is dense in L2 of Rn plus one, and we get the orthogonal decomposition of the theorem. So this way, 
uh, you can show that actually lemma implies the theorem. Lemma implies the theorem. Now, as I said, proof of the lemma can be done uh, purely algebraically, or uh, we can also prove it analytically. So let me give this a uh, little more analytic proof, uh, and then uh, we can move on. Get some, can get some mileage out of this term. Then. Okay, so there is a reduction uh, first. Okay, so since, uh, so, so let me just, just say this is proof of the lemma. Uh, of course, we, we do it by induction. Uh, you see, since, um, yes. Suffices, uh, so okay, first of all, it is true. The lemma, uh, the, the induction, you can, you have to start, but there are two statements, even or not. So you have to prove it for P0 and P1 first, but that's obvious in this case. It is true uh, for P0. I mean, P0 is just constant function one and it's multiple. So for P0 and P1, so that's, there's nothing to prove in that case. So suffices. Uh, to show that um, if for all K, um, if uh, yeah, we have this PK, this decomposition PK equal to HK Gregson R2 PK minus two. Then the statement for the next level is also true. PK plus two is equal to HK plus two. Like some or two decay. Right. Okay, so uh, this is the induction hypothesis. Now, one thing that uh, helps us to reduce this statement further is that um, you see these spaces. HK tilde us. So these are eigenspaces of distinct eigenvalues. These are, I mean, it, I mean they are part of the eigenspaces. So consist of eigenfunctions. of distinct eigenvalues I mean these eigenvalues lambda k's are distinct I mean this is easy to see and so they are orthogonal to each other and by that you can easily convince yourself that then it is enough uh, to prove that uh, if P belongs to PK plus one. So yeah, no, okay, so let me just give the final simplification and then we give the proof. So, There is a little bit of argument here, but I'm just quite passing that because it just gets me into some uh, time that I have to, I don't want to spend that time on that. So, so to prove the lemma, 
suffices to show yeah that's good to show that uh, if p the polynomial p belongs to pj plus 2 is orthogonal to um, pk then p is already harmonic p is harmonic i.e. Um, delta of p equal to zero okay so and this is this is the statement actually not very far from what we wanted to prove so that doesn't help me much um I believe what I have to prove at the end is that, um, yeah, so by induction hypothesis. Delta P equal to zero, even only if it is orthogonal to all subspaces. Um, R two L H K minus two L or two L less than equal to K less than equal to zero, but then because the way that we define the inner product at the beginning, you're integrating over the sphere, so this means that I even only if delta P the plus n of p is orthogonal to the restriction of this thing, which is um, all of h to k, uh, yeah, p to k, p k minus two f till. So now, now we have restricted these guys, so this uh, noisiness factor disappears, and that's what it is. So there is a simplified notation, of course. Let me just use it. The simplified notation is that we just say um, uh, delta Laplacian of f, of course. So yeah, so notation is like this. For any f belonging to C infinity, I already used it kind of, I think. Rn plus one, we get uh, delta of f. This is the usual Laplacian and delta of f tilde. So this delta that applies to f tilde, this is sphere Laplacian. So I don't write this two because it's kind of cumbersome to write this two uh, down, down sphere Laplacian. But this should be clear from the notation because this law, uh, this this delta applies to tilde functions. So these are restrictions of functions on, on the sphere, and this is delta uh, this two in other words, you're saying. So that's that's the convention. Okay, now we are ready to give a simple. It's it's a very simple argument now, but it's kind of interesting argument. As I said, you can prove it purely algebraically. And I believe the algebra proof is much easier, actually. 
So now what's the argument? So, so let P belong to PJ plus two. The phenomenon of degree K plus two homogeneous and H harmonic function of degree K minus two minus that. Then um, we want to study the product and show that the inner product is zero over a sphere. But let's just uh, write down the Laplacian of the product first. Laplacian of P H tilde. Now this is equal to Laplacian of P tilde times H tilde plus twice inner product of P P tilde P H tilde plus P tilde uh, times, uh, this is not inner product, it really times uh, Laplacian of H tilde. So this is a simple exercise. So let me give you an exercise, actually interesting exercise. For any MG, so this is a general result for Riemannian manifolds in general, show that Laplacian of the product behaves the following uh, nice algebraic identity. This should be known from calculus to you. This is delta of F times G plus twice inner product of DF DG. So this is a one form and this is a one form and this is the inner product of two one forms. So it's a function again plus F Delta G. So this is uh, this shows a failure of Laplacian to be. This shows the failure of Laplacian to be uh, to satisfy Leibniz rule by this amount, which you are also using here. So as I said, this is not a difficult exercise. I highly recommend you do it. So using that, then uh, we get. Oh yeah, maybe I give you another exercise as well. So this is part one of the exercise and part two. So yeah, we are not done. So let's just take this to be part one. And part two is also interesting. If M is compact, then uh, you know the following uh, thing is true. Integral Laplacian of F d volume G over M is equal to zero. So, in other words, if you have Laplacian, uh, you take the Laplacian of a smooth function. You integrate it against the volume form over your compact number, you always get zero. So it means that the image of Laplacian is always orthogonal uh, uh, to constant functions. It just means that, yeah, inner product of Laplacian of F and one is always zero on compact manifolds. In general, there's a boundary term, but here it's compact. So. Okay, so these two lemmas, uh, these two exercises are very nice. Uh, I recommend you do it. Now uh, this, so now we have integral over M, the plus N of, oh sorry, in this case SN, so yeah, zero by this R2 uh, over SN, the plus N of PH tilde. So then we use part one, uh, which is you use it here, you expand it, so this is integral over Sn. Uh, Laplace n of P tilde is tilde plus twice uh, inner product of P P tilde 
dh tilde plus e tilde uh, so this is over a sign as well plus e tilde integral of uh, over a sign e tilde dot uh, Laplacian I have to put here uh, the volume, uh, but yeah. If I forget, you know that you cannot integrate functions on manifolds. You have to integrate uh, n forms on manifolds. So that's uh, always understood. Uh, here also, the volume. Okay. So we have that. Then what can we say? Now, of course, uh, this is, um, I mean, H is in the eigenspace. Uh, so, yeah, so uh, now uh, delta of H tilde, so this is the eigenvalue, uh, eigenspace of eigenvalue K minus 2L, right? So this is K minus 2L times N plus K minus 2L minus 1 H tilde. So this, this last term vanishes. Because uh, we know that this guy is again orthogonal to the tilde. So uh, the last term vanish. And we are left with so this guy here is equal to integral delta p tilde h tilde plus twice integral of these two inner product of one forms. But now we are using our formula. The formula kind of uh, the workhorse formula delta of p tilde. Laplacian on the sphere is related to Laplacian on on Rn, Rn plus one, uh, by the following formula, right? This is Laplacian on the sphere. You remember yesterday I, I used this, I mean, on one day I used the formula, this is equal to delta of P tilde. This is Laplacian of Rn restricted plus E2 P, uh, yeah, ER2 restricted plus N times DP dr restricted. Hence, this integral delta p tilde dot h tilde. Yeah, you can just write those terms. Uh, this becomes eventually equal to integral delta p tilde. I dropped this simple, yeah, okay. So using this and with the fact that this is homogeneous of degree uh, k minus 2L, you can compute these terms and then you get that this is equal to delta p tilde times h tilde. Right. So what's the what's the relation between this? So that's a bit of unnecessary complication. It looks complicated, but I hope it is not. And uh, we have got um, yes, integral Laplacian of P tilde times h tilde over Sn is equal to minus twice because it's zero, so that's yeah, the sum of these two things was zero. So we get this with dp tilde h tilde. Uh, so this is equal to minus two inner product of dp tilde. Yeah, here I have to use sharp brackets. Here I use curly brackets. Remember from first lectures, 
we distinguish between sharp bracket and curly bracket. This is a function, but this is a number, right? That's the difference. So P tilde and uh, D P tilde and E H tilde, yes. But then uh, this is equal to minus two. Uh, so we use the adjunction formula. This is equal to P tilde. D star D H tilde, this is Laplacian of H tilde. But the plus n is still uh, we know that this is uh, an eigenfunction so uh, for, for, for Laplacian. Yeah? So Laplacian of H tilde is a multiple of H tilde. So this multiple comes out to be minus two times K minus two L. This is minus two. This is the eigen, eigenvalue. K minus uh, N plus K minus uh, two L minus one times inner product of P tilde H tilde is equal to zero. Okay, so this shows that hence uh, delta of P is orthogonal to PK. Hence it's zero. So this proves the lemma. Um, so you can you can read. Uh, I'm not sure there are even more details in Berger's book. Uh, well, it's French, but that's fine. You can read it. I'm sure. Uh, I mean, and but I, I recommend the algebraic proof. You do it by hand again. This is the third time I'm saying so. The, the result is not uh, is not uh, is not very difficult. So that's the decomposition and. So we got the spectral decomposition of this um, Laplacian on, 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 on SN. And the, um, we have some information at least about um, eigenfunctions. And uh, now uh, one question is we have to compute dimension of this eigenfunction. So dimension of a space of spherical harmonics, right? So that's, that's what we are going to do next before taking a break at once. So we just take a, we just take a quick break soon. So, but uh, let's, let me just write a corollary of this. Any questions, by the way? Okay, so let's, um, well, we can discuss later if you want, but let's uh, now get the corollary of this. Decomposition, I mean, the orthogonal decomposition. Mm. So the multiplicity. Eigenvalue of the K. Uh, remember, it was uh, what? It was uh, n. It was K times n plus K minus one in spec spectrum of this n. Round, round metric. Um, is equal to this combinatorial number, the difference between two n plus k, uh, choose k minus n plus k minus one, choose k minus one. So it's a difference of these two binomial coefficients. Um, so that, that, that's a number that grows, except when k is equal to one. Sorry, when n is equal to one. When a, a, you remember when n is equal to one, you are, you are on, on the circle. And on the circle, the multiplicities were all two, except the first 
eigenfunction, which is one, multiplicity one. But all of them had constant multiplicity two. But that's the only case. Uh, if you go to two and three and higher dimensions, the multiplicity grows like a polynomial uh, of some degree. Let's calculate that. I mean, this is the multiplicity anyhow. So, that's so proof of this lemma or corollary. Okay, so uh, in fact, so we have we have this decomposition, right? So we get dimension of HK. Equal to dimension of PK minus dimension of PK minus two. But dimension of PK, this is something perhaps you have seen in probability theory and many combinatorics, discrete math, and any places. This is dimension of this uh, Kate symmetric power, a space of homogeneous polynomials, uh, I mean, symmetric functions of, of degree K on n plus one variables, right? These are kind of problems that frightened me. <laughs> I was learning probability theory, so I gave up. But the number is, is well known, as you know, is n plus K choose K. Yeah, these are uh, they are important in counting bosons uh, also. Um, uh, yeah, they are symmetric functions. So uh, yeah, so this is dimensional space of yeah homogeneous uh, polys. Degree K in X one, X N plus one. Okay. So just for fun, let's calculate it for um, uh, N equal to two. Uh, example um, two sphere. So for two sphere, we get uh, two plus k choose k minus, uh, I believe, uh, k plus one choose k minus one. Right? So what is it? This is k plus two. Factorial divided by k factorial over two factorial minus k plus one factorial over k minus one factorial. Then I believe we have got two factorial. So this is equal to half of this remains k plus two times k plus one minus. And then I've got uh, what we've got k plus one times k, I suppose. You know. So, is that right? So, yeah, we have got one half k plus one. Okay, so we have got times two. Did we correct it right? So, this uh, I'm getting k plus one. Getting k plus one, so so the, the but so what is the k eigenvalue? Remember, uh, lambda k was equal to k times n plus k minus one, right? But n is two, so this is equal to k times k plus uh, n is two k plus one. Ah, so eigenvalues always grow quadratically, distinct eigenvalues for all the spheres, in particular in this case as well. But the multiplicities uh, depend on dimension. Here, multiplicities grows linearly in K. 
which is not unreasonable. Mean multiplicity uh, mean k equal to k plus one. So now it's it it's it's it would be interesting to show that uh, from this you can drive Boyle's law. I mean, uh, so exercises using this information. Drive. Boyle's law for uh, for uh, S two. I mean, we have complete information also for uh, S n. Uh, also, you should try uh, doing it for S n as well. To write for S n. Uh, it, it's, uh, you have to work a little bit. It's not, I believe it's not, yeah, I have done it for S2 actually myself in my notes, but uh, it's, it's a good idea you try it. And uh, it's not totally trivial, but okay, it's, it's a good exercise. It gives you a kind of handle on the growth of these eigenvalues. And so, yeah, so spherical harmonics. Um, any questions? Okay, so let's look at the case of S2 again and find the first few harmonics, uh, uh, spherical harmonics in this language, in this picture. Again, S2. So, okay, so K equal to zero. This is, um, of course, the eigenvalue is uh, um, I have made mistakes on them. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, zero, no, no, zero is, is an eigenvalue. Yes, lambda zero equal to zero. This is an eigenvalue and uh, the function is one. So this is eigenvalue, eigenfunctions. And this K is just a label. Uh, you, you label eigenvalues by this number. These numbers are important in, in physics and chemistry. I think in, in, in physics uh, of uh, hydrogen atom, for example, or uh, periodic table and in chemistry, a K equal to zero is called S and then you have SPD in that system. And here we call it K equal to zero, one, two, three. So, uh, so I believe they correspond to SPD notation in, in chemistry and uh, quantum mechanics. But so K equal to one, lambda one, the next eigenvalue is equal to two. So um, the multiplicity though, um, I'm getting these guys, which doesn't look good. So, but I, I get these functions now, x1, x2, x3. I've got these functions, x1, x2, x3. These are harmonic uh, polynomials for sure. So if you restrict them to S2, you are going to get uh, spherical harmonics. And degree K is equal to one. So they should correspond to the next eigenvalue, which I calculate here to be two. But uh, I've got three of them for this. But if K is one, 
mu two should be two. The multiplicity here should be two. Why do I get the multiplicity three then? I think the correct multiplicity is two k plus one. So maybe there was a a, a, a small uh, mistake uh -huh. in the calculation of. Yes, maybe. Yeah, yeah, in, in, yeah. I did a uh, maybe. Well, I don't have it here, of course. I, I mean, no. Um, yeah, I think uh, I don't want to go back to that, but this is this is unfortunate. It's two k plus one instead of k plus one. Yeah, k plus one doesn't. I mean, certainly these three functions, x1, x2, x3, from s2 to r, these functions uh, are, are linear independent. I mean, of course, I mean, there is a relation between x1, x2, x3. I mean, x1 squared, x2 squared, x3 squared, x1. But that's not, uh, I mean, in this case, uh, they are linear. So there's no, there's no non, there's no linear relation between it's all independent. So I believe Plage uh, is, is right. So it should be maybe 2k plus one. So in the break, please uh, correct it and then um, check it also. And when we come back in five minutes, we will uh, show that these spaces actually are representation spaces of orthogonal groups. And uh, yeah, they are irreducible representations of orthogonal groups, and they actually all of them. So uh, that needs a proof. So, but uh, I, we will discuss it and then we move on. Any questions? So, so let's take a break for five minutes and then we come back. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So let's take a break. Okay. So one more uh, fact we can get from this calculation is for SN, um, the, of course, always first eigenvalue. So this is a simple eigenvalue, always. Uh, next one, what's the next eigenvalue? Uh, we said it's k times k plus n minus one, right? So k is equal to one, so it's n. With multiplicity, uh, n plus one, I, I'm claiming. And in fact, uh, we know these functions. So the functions that we want are x1, x2, x1 plus one. So you just take n plus one coordinate functions, restrict them to Sn, and you get the eigenfunctions of the first, I mean the second eigenvalue. So not the first. So this is the second eigenvalue. So the first eigenvalue of lambda zero is equal to yeah, sorry, zero. The first this is zero, uh, and then the next argument is n jumps. There's a gap, and with this, these are eigenfunctions. Of um, the one equal to n eigenvalue. So these are the only uh, linear spherical harmonic functions. After that, you have quadratics, which is not just simple. You have some. You have to satisfy some relations between coefficients in order for them to be in the kernel of uh, Laplacian, and then they become spherical harmonics. But for linear, is is obvious. Linear is spherical harmonics. Okay, so that's. Uh, I believe uh, this is uh, something that in general one can say about the SN, but um, maybe you, you can also derive other kind of uh, conclusions, but uh, let's just move on right now to one more aspect. So this now um, we can get, uh, you see this group one plus one. So this is the orthogonal group. Of 
course, I mean, this is just all n by n matrices. Um, n plus one. Plus that a transpose a equal to a a transpose equal to one. You don't even have to write the second one, but that's okay. And of course, this acts on uh, Sn. And uh, so this is just a linear action, and because of orthogonality, it sends Sn into Sn. And uh, what what you can show is that this is actually the group of isometries of this Riemannian manifold. Oh, sorry, Sn plus one. Oh, SN. Yeah, so ON plus one, the orthogonal group of degree N plus one, is the isometry group of uh, N sphere. Uh, of course, the inclusion is uh, obvious, but to show that there is nothing else in the isometry group, uh, it needs a proof, it's not totally obvious, uh, but this is, uh, yeah, that's not what we do. So that's fine. So this is this one. So because ON plus one acts, so we know that ON plus one acts on C infinity of SN. Of course, I mean, the action is just by in, in, in the obvious way, right? This is F of G inverse of X for all G in ON plus one. And for all f in C infinity of Sn and x belonging to Sn, right? So this is the way it acts on the space of functions by uh, for, by pullback of functional reality. So um, okay, but now the point is that because this G acts on Sn by isometry, it commutes with Laplacian. This is the Laplacian of Sn. So, in particular, this G sends uh, spherical harmonics into a spherical harmonics, right? So, to get a representation. K equal to zero, rho K from O n plus one into uh, automorphisms of this uh, spherical harmonic uh, automorphisms of uh, HK. So this is a space of, uh, again, uh, spherical harmonics. Of course, I mean, for K equal to zero, O zero is just a trivial representation because it's one dimensional and it's also trivial. Uh, for k equal to one, we have the standard representation because this is space is n plus one dimensional, h1, uh, standard rep. But uh, after that, you get uh, a series of uh, interesting representations. So that's the way that representation theory of orthogonal group can be actually derived from uh, by, by looking at eigenvalues and eigenfunctions of Laplacian, because these two things are so much tied to each other. But the, the interesting fact, which uh, I won't prove it now, but uh, I will mention and I will also mention some generalization, is that uh, these representations are all irreducible. So that's a fact is that rho k's uh, are unique, are, are orthogonal, are, are irreducible. Of course, they are orthogonal representations because uh, they just reps of O n plus one. Um, and uh, so they give the presentation of S O n. 
is n plus one reps. And if you look at this OM, uh, which is the connected component of ON, so for those, uh, these representations are all, uh, all of the irreducible representations of this Lie group SO, SON plus one. For example, SO3, which is very famous, uh, again, is used in many places. So SO3. E.g. for um, SO3, uh, get all, all of its ellipse um, this way. So you can forget about this whole uh, thing and just say that, okay, you have the standard representation. You take the symmetric power of the standard representation. They are not irreducible, but inside the symmetric part, uh, you just look at the harmonic functions, restrict to harmonic functions, and there you have it. I mean, that's it. So, so that's, uh, so that's all of the uh, EPS of uh, SO is obtained uh, by this method. So, okay. So that's one thing. Uh, another thing is that this can be generalized um, to Lie groups and uh, Lie subgroups, but maybe for that, uh, we can just wait a little bit. Uh, I don't know. Do you have any questions, by the way? Uh, I just remember something. I, 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 yes, I yes. Uh, so this is for the case that the uh, the the quadratic form is definite, right? Yes, I mean it's, it's positive definite. Yes, but so when we have like Lorentzian, then yes. I think we get two components, and for the representation we we get two 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 connected components, right? And no, I mean, is... uh, so no, no. Okay, so what happens is that uh, uh, if you look at uh, the Lorentzian metric, uh, but in, I mean in R four, like the Minkowski metric, uh, the group of orthogonal transformations of that metric has four connected components. It has four. So the four comes from the fact that you have also time orientation and space orientation. Each of them give you two components, two times two is four. So the connected component of identity is exactly, so this is the group of a special relativity. So exactly the group of those uh, four by four matrices that preserve the metric, of course, Minkowski metric, but they have a positive de determinant. They are also uh, time orientation preserving. So there are four components. Here we have two components. But I looked at the connected component of the identity because uh, this other component can create uh, some discrete, uh, you know, uh, changes that I, 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 I didn't want to discuss that. But on SO, you are okay. You have it all by this method. Yeah, Lorentz group. Lorentz group uh, has four connected components. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, thank I, you. I, I can, I can, I can uh, the, uh, talk to you about it later on. I, I'd be happy to talk actually because that's kind of interesting. Or maybe we can give a talk sometimes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, that's that was a good question. Yes. Uh, 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 how how do you define automorphism group of H K again? Oh, automorphism group. I mean, uh, just G L really. This is GL uh, of HK. I mean, this is a real vector space, right? Oh, okay. <laughs> look at, I mean, this is a vector space of dimension. Uh, yeah, we computed this dimension, right? So it's acting on, uh, on this space by, by linear transformations, right? Because, I mean, the whole thing is here. Uh, it's just, uh, you know. Mm. Yeah, okay. Right, I mean, okay, so it's acting on a space. Uh, this is a general philosophy. 
it's acting on a space. So it's acting on the space of functions. It acts on it, it acts on the space of forms and uh, all tensor fields on the manifold. This is called lineariz linearization of the action. So that's a very important uh, piece of idea in, in representation theory. You learned right at the beginning that to go from uh, nonlinear representations, nonlinear actions of groups on manifolds, you linearize it, you immediately get actions of a group on this sort of linear spaces that attach to the manifold. So that's it. Uh, okay. Yes. Question. Yeah. Sorry. So, <clears throat> so you mentioned that there are generalizations of this. So, but in this case, we take the symmetric space of uh, of orthogonal group to be yes. And in general, how is there a nice space for general groups such that we, we get all representations, all unitary rep representations of a group from uh from, from that from the spectrum of that space i believe so yes uh, at least uh, for some groups i believe for uh, rank one lee groups i think this method works in general but for higher rank groups i don't know but uh, yeah this is the uh, this is the case of uh, you know sn is equal to on plus one out out on so in general, you get this manifold M equals to G mod H. So this is a Lie group and it's a closed subgroup. It's a homogeneous space. And there is a, in many cases, the, if this is compact, for example, there exists a Riemannian metric that's invariant under the action of G. And then G, of course, acts on G mod H, right? So G acts on L2 of this. And so if you have the metric, this is the action is for isometries, and your goal is to decompose. And uh, sometimes uh, you can find uh, all ereps by looking at different subgroups here for different manifolds. You get all ereps that way. Yeah. So this is a general philosophy, general idea. Yeah. Uh, sorry, so. Uh... So, so what about the, the irreducible representations on like unitary irreducible representations on uh, Hilbert space? So do we get all that or, or those don't ex exist? Like, because I mean, these are all finite dimensional. Yeah, these are all finite dimensional and they are all compact. Uh, so that's it. In, <coughs> in, in, in the non-compact case, that's a totally different game. I mean, the general ideas uh, carry through, but um, you have to be much more careful and you get infinite dimensional representations in that case. But uh, the general philosophy though, I mean, kind of carries, but it's much more harder. I mean, much more difficult, yeah. So this is what Harish Chandra and uh, Gelfand and uh, yeah, there are several schools who spend their life understanding uh, irreducible unity representations of non-compact Lie groups and uh, periodic groups. So that's a, that's, that's a vocation for the whole life, but yeah, that's a lot okay, of- but, but for compact ones, you don't have any, like uh, for compact ones, the, the only ones are, are finite dimensional and they're all given. Yeah, for, for compact uh, Lie groups, it is a theorem. It's not so difficult, although it's not obvious, I should say, okay. that I think it follows from Peter Weil theorem that all irreducible representations of compact Lie groups or compact groups, actually, compact topological groups are finite dimensional. Yeah. Okay, okay. That's, that's, that's a general theorem. So it follows from Peter Weil theorem if, without you have to do something. I mean, it's not totally trivial, but it's a, it's a, it's a well-known result. Yeah. Okay, so yes. So now I have some chat. So Bobak, what are you doing with chats? It's between students. <laughs> oh, I see. Okay, 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 okay. very good. Yeah. What I, I mean, I can read if you want. No, that's okay. I got it. Okay. No, that's good. 
Uh, I guess uh, it's about time. So what I was going to do next, uh, just to give you a heads up is, um, yeah. Now, uh, you see, these methods are basically, um, carries you only some way. I mean, you, you cannot prove Boyle's theorem by this sort of methods, by concrete calculations. We have to do something uh, much deeper. Uh, namely, we have to bring in uh, PDE techniques, uh, heat kernels or wave equation techniques, things like that. So that's what we're going to do from next week. So the first thing is to prove uh, existence of heat kernel. And then, um, and then, but then, but, and then, and then derive walls. But now let me just uh, quickly, just maybe one minute, maybe tell you. Um, so kind of now a uh, cast of characters from now on uh, is going to be, Yeah, I'm going to put it like this. So the cast of characters is going to be heat trace. Of course, there's going to be other characters too, but one of them is going to be heat trace, which you have already seen this heat trace. Uh, I mean, this is a T equal to a sum exponential of minus T lambda I, I from. So this uh, lambda I, so let's label them from zero up to infinity. This is exactly a spectrum of Laplacian. Okay, I mean, so to start with, we have Mg is a closed Riemannian manifold. Okay, so we have got a closed Riemannian manifold, and then we play with these uh, analytic objects. Uh, there is this uh, heat trace, which is this one. And then another object is going to be this spectral zeta function. Um, so this is zeta, you can, so maybe zeta zm, this is zeta m of s equal to sum one over lambda i to the power s lambda i's different from zero. Uh, this one. Okay, so these two, these two guys, um, kind of main characters of the game, now we can do a lot of things. We have good handle on them. Yeah. Now, but now um, notice that Right now, we don't even know that this is convergent for any T positive. I mean, for T negative, obviously, this is not convergent, even for T zero. So, so let me write it so you just see how difficult now the task is. We don't know uh, if this is convergent. For anything. <laughs> right? So, um, yeah, all we know about lambda i, so let's assume that we have proved the spectral decomposition theorem, which is a result of analysis is not that difficult anyhow. All that it says, says that these eigenvalues are going to infinity and each of them have finite multiplicity. Using that, you cannot show that, uh, just using that, you cannot show that this guy is convergent for any T, positive or negative or zero. I mean, for negative or zero is on the question, positive. You can construct easily sequences of numbers, I'm saying that go to infinity, but this series is divergent for all T positive. So that's same for the second one. with the uh, spectral zeta function. Oh, S, S, sorry. 
But what we are going to show using these analytic techniques is that, so goal one is to show that uh, uh, ZMT is convergent all T positive. Second of all, we have to show that uh, uh, it has a particular behavior near zero drive, short time, asymptotic expansion near equal to zero. So we will we will see that as this function as t goes to zero, this blows up, but it blows up in a particular way. And that's called asymptotic expansion and drive the asymptotic expansion. Uh, drive the short time asymptotic expansion here t equal to zero. Having that, then prove a Tauberian theorem. So these are our goals, Tauberian theorem. From which a wise law will follow. From which, of course, using two wise law follows. And fourth is show that this uh, zeta function is analytic in the right hand plane. Is analytic in real part of S. Actually, very precisely, we know exactly where, in which domain this is going to be analytic immediately. Real part of S bigger than N over two. It will have, then we will prove that it has analytic continuation to a meromorphic function to the whole plane. With uh, analytic continuation. To, to a meromorphic function. Meromorphic. C, and we will find uh, the places uh, where uh, residues of this, uh, I mean, the poles of this uh, uh, function are going to be located. And we will find the residues uh, of this. And for example, we will see that the residue of this N over two, the top pole, show that, so I'm not finishing. Show the residue of zeta and s at s equal to n over two uh, is related to the volume of the manifold. So this is analog of Weiser. And um, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, we have to, we have to prove a lot of statements. Uh, so it goes on, I mean, one, two, three, four, and then uh, there's going to be some more items. So, okay, so that's, that's our plan. So we have to now uh, just uh, start by looking at, the first goal is um, to show existence of the heat kernel. From heat kernel, we can prove a one and a little more work you prove two, and then you go on. And uh, so we will see that actually this, this, this idea is very similar to the idea that Riemann used when he proved uh, functional equation for zeta function and his study of residues and uh, zeros of the zeta functions, very much related. So this is kind of built based on that, but of course, it's not quite like that because in the case of Riemann zeta function, 
everything is very, very symmetric. You have a lot of exact results. For general manifolds, things are true only approximately, but the idea goes through uh, in, in the sense of asymptotic expansions. Uh, they are not equalities, they are just asymptotic equalities. And that's enough to prove uh, a lot of things like these results that we want to prove. So that's our, our plan for the next, uh, next uh, I would say four, five, six lectures. Uh, so, yeah, and, and then we move on. Of course, there are a lot of interesting stuff. So, but that's a lot of, lot of cool 